In this lecture, we will have a look at extensions of the Poisson regression model that can be used when we cannot assume that the variance is equal to the mean. We will first discuss the concepts of under and over dispersion. Then we will see how we can use quasi Poisson regression and negative binomial regression when we cannot assume that the variance is equal to the mean. Remember from the previous lectures about Poisson regression that we must fulfill the assumption that the mean count must be equal to the variance of the counts since the variance and the mean share the same parameter in the Poisson distribution. In the lecture about using categorical variables in Poisson regression where we analyzed the number of metastatic lymph nodes, we could easily estimate the variance based on the four data points in group A. We then compare the variance with the mean. In this case, we can see that the variance is equal to the mean. We could also calculate the variance of group B. In this case, the variance is a bit larger than the mean, which might be due to sample variation, since the variance and the mean have been estimated based on just four data points. When the variance does not deviate too much from the mean, we can still assume that the data follows a Poisson distribution. However, how do we check the assumption that the mean is equal to the variance for this kind of data, where we have only one observation for people at the same age? For example, the observed number of cases of people at age 70 is about 30 in this population. Since we only have one data point for this age category, it is impossible to estimate the variance. However, if we cut the data into for example 5 different pieces, then we can calculate the variance and the mean of the observations in the 5 different groups. For example, in this group we see that the mean is 73 and the variance is 68, whereas the mean and the variance for this group is 38 and 22 and so forth. Just as we would expect from a Poisson distribution, when the mean is increasing, the variance is also increasing. We see that the variances and the means are fairly similar in the five different groups. Let's plot the means and the variances against each other. For example, this data point represents the mean and the variance of the data points in the group with the oldest people in the dataset. Whereas this data point represents the mean and the variance of the next oldest group and so forth. If the Poisson regression model should fulfill the assumption that the mean is equal to the variance, these data points should scatter around a straight line with the intercept of 0 and the slope of 1. This line tells us that if, for example, the mean count is 50, the variance of the count should also be 50. We see that the straight line with the slope of 1 fits quite well to the five data points, which indicates that the mean is equal to the variance and that the Poisson regression model would be okay to use. Another way to analyze how the variance changes as a function of the mean is to study the residuals. Remember that the residual is the difference between the data point and the fitted or predicted value according to the model. A residual therefore represents the vertical distance between the data point and the fitted curve. If we plot the residuals as a function of the age, we see that the spread of the data increases with increasing age, which is what we would expect since the mean count increases over age. For the group with the largest mean count, the spread around the curve is much larger compared to the group with the smallest mean count. A better plot to see how the variance changes as a function of the mean is to plot the residuals against the fitted values according to the model. These fitted values are the corresponding values of the curve for each data point. Again, we see that the spread increases with increasing fitted values of the counts, just as we would expect for a Poisson regression model. We'll now have a look at the so-called Pearson residuals. 
The Pearson residuals are calculated by dividing the ordinal residuals by the square root of the fitted values. If the Poisson model is appropriate for the dataset, the Pearson residuals should have a constant spread over the fitted values. In this plot, we see that the spread of the Pearson residuals is relatively constant over the fitted values. Based on our previous calculations and the Pearson residuals, it seems like we fulfill the assumption that the variance is equal to the mean. We'll now discuss the concept of dispersion. Dispersion is a general term in statistics to describe the spread of the data. For example, the variance and the standard deviation are measures of dispersion. Overdispersion is the presence of greater variability in the data than what we would expect. This might be due to missing explanatory variables in our model. Under dispersion is the presence of smaller variability in the data than what we would expect, since the Poisson regression model assumes that the variance is equal to the mean. Overdispersion implies that the variance is greater than the mean, whereas underdispersion implies that the variance is smaller than the mean. If our data shows overdispersion, the use of a Poisson model will underestimate the standard errors, which will result in too low p values with an increased risk for a type 1 error. A quasi Poisson model can be used as an alternative if you have under or over dispersion. The quasi Poisson model has one additional parameter which tells how much the variance linearly changes in relation to the mean. The quasi-Poisson model will result in the same coefficients as the Poisson model, but with different standard errors and p-values since it adjusts for under or over dispersion. Note that the quasi-Poisson model cannot be fitted with the classical maximum likelihood method. The standard AAC value can therefore not be computed. The dispersion parameter used by the quasi-Poisson model can be estimated by the following equation. This dispersion parameter tells how much the variance linearly changes in relation to the mean. This term corresponds to the square of the Pearson residuals. n is the number of data points and k is the number of estimated parameters. If you like, we can express this term as the square of the Pearson residuals. Based on our previous data, where the sum of the square Pearson residuals is equal to 65.6 and the sample size of 71, where we estimate two parameters of the Poisson regression model, the dispersion parameter is estimated to 0 0.95. Under dispersion is absurd if the value of the dispersion parameter is less than 1, whereas over dispersion is observed if the value is greater than 1. In our example, the dispersion parameter is close to 1, which indicates that we fulfill the assumption that the mean is equal to the variance. Remember that we previously plotted the variance against the mean like this. If the mean is equal to the variance, according to the assumption for the Poisson regression, the data points should scatter around a line with an intercept of 0 and a slope of 1. However, when we use the quasi Poisson regression model, we assume that the variance increases by 0 0.95 for every unit increase in the mean. The slope of this line is therefore 0 0.95. For example, if the mean is equal to 60, the variance should be equal to 57 according to the quasi Poisson model. If the variance and the mean are equal, the dispersion parameter should be equal to 1. If the quasi Poisson regression model would estimate the dispersion parameter to, for example, 0 0.5, the variance is less than what is expected by the Poisson model which indicates that we have under-dispersion. 
If the quasi-Poisson regression model would estimate the dispersion parameter to, for example, 2, the variance is assumed to be 2 times greater than the mean, which indicates that we have over-dispersion. Note that some statistical software tools may include a statistical test, which can test if the dispersion parameter is significantly different from 1. If the dispersion parameter is not significantly different from 1, we could use the Poisson regression model instead of a quasi-Poisson model. However, what should we do if the data shows a clear over-dispersion like this? In this case, there is no linear relationship between the variance and the mean. The quasi-Poisson model would not be appropriate because it assumes that the variance increases linearly as a function of the mean. We see that the straight line does not seem to fit well with this data. When there is a nonlinear overdispersion like this, a negative binomial model is more appropriate than the quasi Poisson regression. We'll now have a look at the dataset where overdispersion is present. Note that the variation of the data is very large when the number of cases is large. If we cut the dataset into 10 pieces, we can calculate the mean and the variance in each of the 10 groups. We can plot the variances versus the means for the 10 groups like this. For example, this data point represents the mean and variance of the counts of the oldest people, whereas this data point represents the mean and variance of this group, and so forth. According to the Poisson regression model, which assumes that the slope between the variance and the mean is equal to 1. The following line does not fit well with the 10 data points. This indicates that the Poisson regression model is not appropriate to use. Although a quasi Poisson regression model can account for the overdispersion, it does not fit well since the variance is not linearly dependent on the mean. For this type of data, the negative binomial regression model fits best since it can account for a nonlinear relationship between the variance and the mean. If you study the spread of the Pearson residuals as a function of the fitted values, we see that the spread is not constant. The spread of the Pearson residuals is increasing for larger values of the fitted values. The negative binomial model is quite complicated to explain, but we can think of it as a Poisson regression model with an extra parameter, theta, which may account for overdispersion. In comparison to the quasi Poisson regression model, the negative binomial model assumes that the variance can increase by the square of the mean. We see that if theta is very large, this term is approximately equal to zero and the variance is therefore equal to the mean. In this case, the negative binomial model would, similar to a Poisson regression model, assume that the variance is equal to the mean. For our example data, the negative binomial model estimates the parameter theta to 4.78. For example, if the mean is 40, the variance is assumed to be 375. This is exactly what we get if we check the value of the curve when the mean is equal to 40. Note that since theta is a positive parameter, the variance cannot be smaller than the mean, which means that the negative binomial model can only account for overdispersion, whereas the quasi Poisson can account for both under and over dispersion. Let's compare the Poisson model with the quasi Poisson and the negative binomial model when the data show overdispersion. Since the Poisson model and the quasi Poisson model will result in the same coefficients, their fitted curves will be identical, which is the reason why only the curve for the Poisson regression model is shown. If you compare the coefficients of the Poisson model and the negative binomial model, we see that the values are very similar which explains why the fitted curves almost overlap. 
The main difference between the three models lies in the estimated standard errors of the coefficients. The standard errors are about twice as high for the negative Banon model compared to the Poisson model, and almost three times higher in the quasi-Poisson regression model compared to the Poisson model. A greater standard error will result in higher p-values, which will have important consequences when we interpret our results. For example, the Poisson model has an intercept that is significantly different from zero, which is not the case for the quasi-Poisson and the negative binomial model if our significance level is set to 0 0.05. This example illustrates the importance of using a quasi-Poisson or a negative binomial model instead of a Poisson model in the presence of overdispersion. From our previous analysis of the Pearson residuals, and how the variance changes as a function of the mean. We know that the negative Banon model is appropriate for this kind of data. Suppose we instead fit the three different models to data where the variance is approximately equal to the mean. When no overdispersion is present, the three models generate almost identical results. We see that the standard errors are more or less identical for the three models. Since we do not observe under under or over dispersion, we would select the simpler model, which is the Poisson regression model in this case. This was the end of this lecture about quasi Poisson and negative binomial regression. In the next lecture, we'll have a look at the so called zero inflated Poisson regression models, which are used to model count data when there is an excess of zeros.